Hi everyone, this is Greg from Greg's Risky Guide. Welcome back, or welcome if you're here for the first time. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and click the notification bell if you like the video. Um, I often get a lot of views and a lot of nice comments, but not many likes and likes help uh, the video to be uh, referenced. Okay, so if you can, <laughs> thank you in advance. Um, for this episode, I'm resuming my finishes uh, theme uh, videos uh, and uh, after the Madeira one, and I will put a link uh, below in the description for those who want to see the Madeira ones. Um, I'm now doing a huge one. As you can see, my table is uh, not full, but well uh, filled, let's say. Um, because it is so far, I think, uh, my most represented finish uh, in my co whiskey collection. Um, probably second one must be rum cask finish. And third one could be Madeira uh, cask finish. Uh, then after I have some uh, Sauterne cask finishes or maturation. Um, and each one will have his own video so please be patient and you're gonna have a specific one uh, for these other finishes as well maybe also I will do uh, someday other uh, maybe more generic about uh, wine finishes red wine finishes or white wine finishes uh, etc but for now, it's port. It's one of my very favorite, along with Madeira uh, uh, finishes. And it's also, um, let me check again, not to tell you silly things. Uh, this is also one of the very first one that appeared in the whiskey industry. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you which was the bottle uh, responsible for this. Um, let me check something and I'll be back. Apologies. Okay, so sorry for the interruption. I had to check some historical elements I was not sure of. Here in Greg's Whiskey Guide, you always get precise information when I know it and it is double checked. When I'm sure about it, I state it. When I'm not sure, I say it's a guess and I uh, put some reservation, okay? Um, so, port finishes. Uh, before I tell you what I just checked about whiskey finishes, let me talk to you a bit about port, considering I'm not a port specialist, wine specialist. Um, and I forgot to, to put the ones I bought especially on the table to show you uh, what port can be, but. What I'm going to do is, as I did for the Madeira, let's not lose time with um, a bottle of wines that are not especially uh, super great ones and good looking to pass on the camera. I'm going to drop you some links uh, about port to have the history of port, all the background and uh, the more detailed things and focus on whiskey but you have to uh, know uh, some generalities so there you go um, in the 18th, in 18th century sorry uh, a wine merchant uh, was um, going to send to England a uh, wine English merchant uh, ask for Portuguese wine to be sent by boat of course to England uh, and what's going on when the, the port arrives, so I, I guess it's about weeks, we're speaking about weeks, um, in the country, or uh, at least a uh, several days, the wine was really bad. And we're talking for now about red wine, not fortified wine like port is. So uh, the boat is arriving the the wine merchant is checking it and he said oh no that's bad uh, it's uh, it has turned it's it's uh, it's now uh, no better than vinegar so um what can he do 
he did a trick that uh, changed history of uh, fortified wines and of wines and Portuguese wines in particular. Uh, not all, but the, the one we're talking about today that is port. He added some eau de vie, which is spirit, um, to the uh, wine in order to uh, try to rectify it. So this wine, which was already strong in alcohol, uh, did mute and the, uh, the adding of, uh, of spirit, of uh, alcohol, did several things, lose, make the wine lose its acidity, not all, but a lot of, and uh, bring on uh, more sugars. And so in the 18th century, the uh, port became uh, famous because of that, but also because a French Colbert minister who, um, who did uh, add a lot of tax to uh, French wine and, um, and to port wine. So uh, success uh, was so much uh, important that, and that Portuguese um, did uh, increase the production and the quality tended to decrease at the same time of course so the government reacted and for the first time to uh, get uh, in order to have a better quality uh, product he decided to limit the area of production and uh, gave uh, to this area the first uh, in French, we say AOC, Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, and in English, it's PDO, Protected Designation uh, of Origin. And the port wine got the first one in 1756. Um, so, the, and this region is the Douro region, uh, and it's um, count mille hectares. That's hard to, uh, I haven't double checked in English. Um, so it's a huge region uh, divided into three parts, which gives three different um, no, uh, names. Baixa uh, Corgo, apologies for my pronunciation in advance, Duro Superior and Cima Chorgo. Um, okay, I'm not going to go too much uh, into details here, but now, uh, as I said, uh, you have some details uh, in the description and links. Just let me just uh, summarize the different uh, things uh, we c you can find uh, about port. You can find white port. They're not the most famous, even if they're supposed to be good. Uh, they have a good reputation and the red wines you have vintages there are the most nobles there are six categories uh, for them most of them must wait 10 years before being um, the best to to uh, to taste um, and some of these vintages have more than a century but they're only three percent of the production then there's the LBV, late bottled vintage, uh, from only one, um, <sighs> uh, one um, harvest. And they use the same kind of um, grape. Uh, it's a little different because it's in a huge uh, vatting uh, casks and um, they are aged from four to six years. So uh, it's a bit less powerful than the, than a vintage. Then you have the ruby, and I'm gonna show you some ruby and Tony uh, port finishes. Ruby is a, a blend of several years with uh, an average of three to five years old of a finish in a big uh, vat, which is called foudre in French. Uh, ruby is more for current uh, wines. Some are more noble, some are more uh, famous, but we're going into big, uh, big concepts here, not into much details. Then you have Tony, and Tony have minimum five years in um, in oak barriques, so it's the name for European, often for European wine cask. They're called barriques. And they have 500 liters capacity. Um, so 
they're classified uh, from their age the tawny the basic one is five to six years old the tawny reserve it's seven to eight years old the 10 the 20 30 and 40 are uh, a blend of years um, but um, the middle the average uh, um, when you have a tawny 10 years old it will be 10 to uh, 19 years and uh, for a tony uh, 20 uh, years old declared on the label it's probably 20 to 29 years the tony colita um, are about um, vintage port and these are considered as genuine tony uh, port wines okay so there you have it for the uh, the great lines but i'm gonna comment a graphic here um, just telling you that white port commonly gives you apricot sweet baked apple citrus peel and roasted nuts according to some specialists um, the rosé port uh, you can find also sometimes rosé port uh, will give you strawberry raspberry cranberry and caramel while the um, for the tony port you'll have almost the same but you so caramel and raspberry but you also have hazelnut cin cinnamon clove and fig and last but not least the ruby port will have blackberry raspberry cinnamon and chocolate notes right um, now we need to go to the whiskey right <laughs> so second part now on to the whiskey and uh, I'm going to present you the first ever um, finish because Glen Morangi was the, the precursor of all these uh, finishes prior to any other distillery. And we're talking about S Scottish single malts, of course, category. So I still have some, <laughs> had to change the cork. This is the first one, the first pot would finish, uh, I think, I'm almost certain. <coughs> sorry of um, Scotch whiskey history this was introduced in 1994 and was a prior just a bit prior to sherry and rum finish and then sauterne but for I believe the first ones to do uh, this what I call traditional finishes port sherry Madeira was Glenmorangie and um, my bottle is from 2006 this is of course has changed uh, now I think it's the um, if I'm not mistaken and I'm gonna mistake is it a Quinta Ruben or the La Santa I always uh, uh, mistake let me check it okay apologies guys uh, this is the Quinta Ruben now this has become the Quinta Ruben so just to let you know uh, why I did improvise this a bit because I still have some um, personal family issues to uh, to solve so I'm rushing a bit the, the, the fact this video uh, should have been made another day and I won't be able to do it next Saturday so in order to release it uh, very soon um, probably not today I'm gonna uh, we'll see <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna try to um, I do not improvise everything but I have had to improvise a bit of things so apology if it's a bit uh, hectic and disorganized so yeah this gives you uh, nice apple notes nice um, orange nice uh, let me check I'm, I'm not gonna try it because I'm gonna try two whiskies for this um, review and I'm gonna do a Glen Morangy rundown by the way uh, all a lot of things are planned so please be patient uh, I'm gonna also uh, give you a hint of other reviews coming in because there are at least two whiskies on my table that are related to to rundown I'm gonna do so very soon yeah so uh, ripe fruit um, apricot cooked apples uh, 
soft spices, cinnamon, stuff like that. I don't know uh, which kind of port was used for this one. I didn't find any clue uh, on the internet. It's, yeah, a thing I wanted to tell you before I start is with a whiskey um, finished in port or, or sometimes also other kinds of uh, wines or spirits, the provenance from uh, the wine of origin or fortified wine like this, um, port is a fortified wine, often the producers won't give you the exact domain, the exact place uh, where it comes from. And sometimes it's because it's a blend of different wines for, of different regions uh, and of different ages. And uh, they uh, buy this in bulk. And for great companies that are more watching where they uh, source from, like Glenmorangie, there are more controlled, of course, but they don't necessarily give you the domain, uh, the chateau, etc. If there was a chateau, yeah. for instance, they give it for uh, other kinds of wine, but sometimes they're not allowed by the the wine company to, uh, and also by the regulations. For instance, you won't see Chateau Margaux, you will see only Margaux most of the time. Um, some state it, I don't know why they can and other can't. Uh, but yeah, so just to let you know, you probably with all the bottles on the table, you will mostly have the mention of a port. For some, you'll have the mention of Ruby or of a Tony. Uh, me now, let me tell you my thoughts, which are subjective. For me, port finishes give basically two kinds of profile to the whiskey. They can give you a profile that's a bit whiny, a bit um, acidic. And at the same time, they will have a strange grenadine uh, taste, um, such as first batches of, of this, for instance, were pretty much uh, grenadine-like, so the French um, red fruit-based uh, um, drink and lemonade. Uh, and this is very weird. So you have also pure strawberries, uh, crushed strawberries, ripe strawberries. And it can be uh, disturbing for some people to have this very uh, loud note. And also, I have to mention, sometimes the body is thinner than uh, in other port finishes. And this what appears this in this bottling, which is... Uh, quite old one I believe um, I think this one was uh, let me check again I couldn't have a paper with everything because I have too many bottles uh, on the, on the um, I'm sorry um, this is not professional at all I am ashamed a bit <laughs> uh, but you gotta keep it a bit uh, it's also because I have a lot of whiskey I have to tell you 2011 batch uh, and at this time Penderin did bottle its uh, portwood uh, bottles expression uh, I don't know if it was for France only or for uh, whole Europe or world wise but for France there were no box and it was 41% ABV. Since then, they have upped the game to 46%. They have changed a bit the recipe. And uh, let's say around two years ago, I've retried the Pender in Portwood before the rebranding with the uh, new shape that I hate, honestly. I don't like it. Uh, I find it awful compared to this beautiful, rounded, tall one. Um, this is personal. Um, while the the bottle has changed, 
and uh, years have passed, uh, I think the juice is now better. And this is a good thing. So this is so-so, but uh, recent ones I have tried uh, are much better. So there's more balance, there's more body, and uh, I'm happy about it. So probably buy another bottle later on. Then the other profile I found, and it's the most uh, represented in my collection, but it's the one I prefer. It is the uh, full bodied, full fruity, uh, then less on red fruit and more on orchard fruit and uh, apricots, uh, apples, um, quince maybe, uh, a hint of red fruit, but only. Uh, cinnamon uh, ginger etc but very well balanced and a lot of candied fruit most of all okay so i'm gonna present now you the bottles one by one and i'm gonna do two tastings after that so stay tuned first one is a blend though it's an exception to this series uh because i haven't seen uh, i haven't come across a lot of blends that were um finished in port um, I almost know no one uh, my memory might be a, a bit weak now but uh, so this one is a recent addition to the uh, famous cruise um, range it's a ruby cask so it states ruby port yeah so nice red fruit uh, nice candied fruit of course some caramel natural and artificial yes mit farbstoff the famous german mansion you will find a lot i don't know if it can focus enough uh no i'm sorry um so yeah nice entry level oh i spilled some here <laughs> nice entry level um whiskey for those who can't afford or do not want to go into a uh, single malts yet to uh, if you have a famous goose home a uh, regular one that's uh, focusing on sherry cask most often try this one it's a nice addition to the range um, it has some acidic elements some red fruit elements some uh, candied fruit so it will give you an idea of what uh, a port finish can be before you get into a single malt. Okay, let's go now in alphabetical order with this beautiful Ochroisk, hard to spell, um, which I already talked about. It's a uh, 2003 bottling, 13 years old, 43% ABV from two casks, which you can see here um beautiful fruity juicy apricot uh, uh, lots of candied fruits of all kinds uh, nice spices and uh, glazed sugar for uh, cake toppings stuff like that i already talked about this uh, in another video uh, about a rare uh, spoken uh, distillery uh, um, discreet malts was the name so check it out if you know more about this Ochro Space Side whiskey. Then we have a, a great, though it's not exact alphabetical order, sorry about that. Then we have a rarity here with the Bomodon, which is now very expensive. Um, this one was uh, bottled around 2007 and it was a UK edition. This is a 15 years old um, ruby port cask finish, uh, gorgeously looking, it's not its bottle, but it's a sample of it. Uh, this cost me around 45 to 50 euros at that time. Now you'll probably play 300 if you want to have this collector's beautiful, awesome uh, Bomore, one of the best ever in the core range and really it's a it's a fruit treat it's a fantastic uh whiskey i will come back again to it when i will do very soon a bomore 
uh, rundown and I have a lot of bombors uh, so you will know a bit more about bombor. Balvenie and I have a, a box of the 91 which is, is another place and uh, so I have the 91 and the 93 um, the 93 was uh, whoops let me so this is discontinued of course like the, the Balvenie um, yeah so this one was battled around 2008 while the 91 was battled around 2007 with 40% ABV of course chill filtered etc of course it depends some about them is are non chill filtered mind you um, this is uh, basically the 12 years old uh, the 10 years old sorry the old 10 years old founders plus uh, a few years more so basically 13 to 14 years old uh, whiskey this is gorgeous this is really fruity balanced malty uh, still a lot of malt in this uh, I love it uh, it's not for everyone but it's very accessible when I mean it's not for everyone it's not for People, young people especially, that now needs only to have a blast of uh, alcohol and spirit and have something uh, instantly very characterful and very powerful. This one is more for people looking for subtlety. This is not on the market, but there's a beautiful whiskey despite it's a 40% ABV and it's a bit too high priced now but I can really advise you uh, I want to advise you the 21 years old Portwood uh, which is a really fabulous whiskey it's like uh, marmalade and um, so a bit bitter and uh, and a bit uh, sugary so two kinds of uh, let's say marmalades and jam uh, of apricots, uh, peaches, uh, fruits of all kinds. It, it's uh, very thick. It's a wonderful whiskey, and uh, I hope I will have a bottle of this someday, especially as uh, around one year and a half maybe ago I tried a recent expression because I've been trying these Balvenies for 20 years or so, and I was amazed how very good the recipe still. Uh, nowadays uh, nowadays so really uh, if you have the money of course it's around 170 to 200 and more euros uh, probably around less than 200 pounds i don't know in uk uh, but it's it's a really beautiful one this one was 30 euros by the way <laughs> so it's another story next and we're gonna also see it in the rundown that's why i'm not tasting it today this absolutely stunning um ben rear <laughs> whoops solstice second edition heavily ported port finish 17 years old uh and is it chill filter it doesn't say mm. I would have liked them to uh, state that if from 2017 bottling aged in uh, finished in Tony port pipes um, and yeah uh, I have to check something now apologies again yeah sorry uh, port pipes it's the name of the particular very uh, oval looking um, port casks and the capacity which is never remember exactly i have to check it it's between 500 and 650 and most often uh, it is said 550 uh, liters cask you have about all the kind of cask which can be very confusing and the capacity uh, uh, of them i have a topic on my website you can have a look i listed dozens of different kinds of uh, of casks from uh, the 30 liters to uh, to the maximum uh, that's authorized in Scotland is 700 but doesn't often get until that uh, most often the biggest can be 500 uh, 650 like uh, like this port probably um, 
so yeah this one is an absolute stunner it's the balance between the port and the peat uh, impact is uh, is awesome lots of fruits lots of character uh, this one uh, if you can try it blind uh, it could uh, along in a, with Isle of Whiskies in, in a big session could be very uh, tricky and uh, you might prefer this one to some Isla haha <laughs> so we're gonna speak about this again it might be colored but i'm not sure but look at this this is crazy okay so this one was a beautiful benria then another one i haven't much left in the bottle so i uh, i did uh, sample it it's that absolute cracker glenlossy uh, in the old style shifton's range uh, of um Jan McLeod in the bottler and this was a uh, cask 9141 uh, distilled September 92 bottled uh, August 2003 natural color and chill filtered there you go this was the best era in my opinion uh, I've known from Glen Lassie I spoke already about this one but basically uh, and it's cast strength it's 52.5 10 years old but so much delivering uh, fruit uh, and uh, pastry uh, elements uh, in the taste uh, you know millefeuille which is a thousand leaves it's a name of a french pastry uh, these kinds of uh, beautiful notes uh, so yeah it's the sugary side of port not too excessive but uh, it's the one uh, when it comes to pastry, uh, yeah, this one is awesome and also to match with some French pastries as well. Uh, next one is, and we're going to try it, Glen Murray. Glen Murray, uh, one of the most affordable, around 30 euros uh, port cask finish. It's NAS, uh, which statement, yes, around five, six years old, maybe but it's a beautiful one i i think it's it's a, it's a nice introduction to port finishes um it's the elgin classic range you can find in supermarkets or uh, in retailers um this is beautiful the basic one which is bourbon matured is is, is a stunner uh, this one is nice too uh the sherry cask is beautiful and a bargain as well so we'll come back to this very shortly next one and i have to thank luna aaron for this very generous sample we had several swaps and uh, arrangements but uh, this was uh, a nice uh, surprise to it so it's um, basically campbelltown festival 2020 that was cancelled but they still did bottle uh, um, 14 years old this one is a tony port um and it's uh 14 years old i i don't have abv here i gotta check it out um and yeah like i said glamorangi then we have two three uh foreign intruders is um if i may say i mean non-scotch ones uh i showed you previously the pandering portwood um don't buy this one by the way it's old so you might not find it but buy the current one that i think must be uh, much better than this this is still nice though but it's not an easy sipper for me um then i have an exceptional one uh, which you can't find now unless you uh, pay a lot of money but like I did work for them uh, before doing my internet website, before anything uh, public uh, really about whiskey. Um, I mean, on my own. This, of course, it's from 2009. It's a nine years old barrel HHO554 Sullivan's Cove Tasmania Distillery Single Malt um at the time it was already difficult to, to buy sorry <coughs> at around 100 euros 
but now you have to add a zero I mean, or something like that which is crazy insane and not worth it but hundred or two maybe um, beautiful one a lot of spices uh, some kind of uh, roasted coffee beans notes which is very strange and uh, new it's also the oak policy from uh, Sullivan Cove that makes that and the spirit which is uh, very malty and very special <coughs> sorry but the port I don't know which port they used uh, it seems to be an old uh, old cast of ports and local uh, made port probably um, but the the result is stunning you have my tasting notes on online as well on the, on the website uh, it's just to show you what people can do that doesn't mean you have to buy this or another stunner and uh, this one you can still find it because it has been produced even if it's a 2011 bottling here um, yeah, they doubled the um, ABV. I don't know why. It's very strange. They doubled the ABV and they doubled the quantity. Weird. This one is a monster. It's a port monster. Uh, a definition, uh, a nickname that probably has to be uh, invented just for this one. It's one of the most... Um, it's probably with the Bob Mordon and the Benriach uh, the most uh, awarded or the most, um, let's say, the highest ranked whiskey on my table today. Uh, it's over 96, something like that. Uh, it's a stunner, not for everyone because it's very strong on alcohol, not only uh, about the ABV, but also the character it has. Um, the Porto Nova is also very special because it's, f it's first matured in, in, in Bourbon and then passed into port cask and then again into first fill Bourbon barrels, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think it's, 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 it's a very unique recipe. Oh no, sorry. Virgin Oak, then uh, Bourbon. No, no, sorry. Um, refill bourbon and new American oak. Then first fill port pipe and then an unstated fill uh, bourbon. Um, and it's batch one, which is uh, very special for me. So this, you have my notes on the website. This is just insane oriental uh, tasting notes. Um, you know, it's speaking about port, but it's more Indian than uh, Portuguese. All I can say, let, let's check. Uh, I invite you to check my notes on, online. Now we're going to try two whiskies you still can find. So under this delicious, delicate, sorry, pour it, drink it, enjoy it, uh, coin from New Drum Drinker. What do I have? I have this. Oops. I uh, have to be careful because it's not completely stable here. Next time I'll choose another uh, tin box. Um, but I think like I did in the last video, it might be interesting to put it very close to the camera and not show it and take it away while I pour it. So just tell me if you think it's a good idea or if it's not. Um, so there you have the color but bearing in mind uh, for this yeah there's some instability of the lighting I'm sorry bear in mind then this is colored this is very young but this has uh, one A158 probably not much because I see the kind of color the pot gives to the uh, to the whiskey usually um, and it is 40% uh, ABV uh, chill filtered, but it's still interesting as an introduction to uh, to port finishes. Okay, on to the nose. Mm. Mm. 
yeah there's a sourness instantly coming from the wine but there are also notes of um, red fruits yeah hint of strawberry hint of uh, apricot hint of blackcurrant strangely it's not the sherry version but and some nice vanilla in the background it's the, the first maturation and bourbon yeah now the the taste it's langevin So it's light, that's true. It fades quickly. Gotta take another mouthful, but it is nice and balanced. And a slight silky sensation. Slight almost solventy in the background, but in a good way. You can feel the wine shouting a bit to say, hey. <laughs> um, the nice fruity elements, crystallized sugar, crystallized fruits, or orchard fruits, apricots, apples. Um, peaches etc it is not super loud super expressive like uh, the ABV driven of course Glenlossy but also Glenlossy character it's something special it's very powerful whiskey um, this is not the Glenmorangy even this is not the Belvedere this is hard to explain but this is another style um, I think it's nice so I, I can recommend it to you do not put too much uh, as it is wine driven uh, you'll have more wine notes but a few drops can help assess this whiskey mm. yeah some wine is coming in but again cut it fruits nice elements spices are very soft a hint of ginger a hint of pepper but it's almost no spices it's more some kind of a slightly heady alcohol but it's because of its youth i think Mm. yeah it's a it's a solid um, introduction entry level nice mouth feel even if it's not very long um, nice introduction I think don't remember my rate but it's um, in the low 80s but it looks low 80s uh, related to a very uh, reasonable price it's it's uh, it's a good ratio for me so um, it's a nice one i kind of prefer the the sherry one to this one um but i enjoy it more now that it's uh, almost at its half um next one i'm gonna try now I shall put this it's this because I'm too curious I'm not trying too many whiskies at the, at the moment so um, um, I wanted to pay homage also was too curious the coin is not smelling nothing and this time it's Chris the last drop coin um, 
I'm going to discover along with some of you there have been already uh, quite some reviews about this and uh, this is highly praised by a lot of YouTubers uh, the previous one two years ago I think 2018 maybe or no no before probably uh, 15 years old port seemed to have a lot of success as well it, it was a ruby port and now it's a tony port uh, let me check a moment I'm sorry okay sorry for the interruption 50 put 2.8 52.8% ABV uh, and there has been uh, 15,000 bottles of this so quite a lot uh, and also it's American oak uh, ex bourbon cask and then uh, Tony port finish so <laughs> There you go, I'm discovering uh, now this, I haven't opened it yet, so it's a surprise for me as well. Probably need to open up, even if it's not from the, 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 the bottle. Ooh, ah, I forgot to say it was pitted as well. Ooh, nice balance between the, the port side and the um, smoky side. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, you know, bonfires and also a bit ashy smoke, a chimney smoke, uh, a chimney uh, that has been um, the 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 fire has been extinguished, uh, let's say a few hours ago, and you're in a traditional house, stone walls and stuff. Uh, like at some of my friends, uh, I usually went to try whiskeys in this old house, it's finished now. Um, and I kind of love this uh, old, old school, old style of a uh, house uh, chimney uh, order. Oh, this is very reminiscent of uh, visiting those places. This is beautiful just for that. I uh, let it oxygen a bit. I know it's uh, it's gonna be a long video as well. I'm gonna try to keep it under an hour though. I don't have so much fruit on the nose. Uh, it's the smoke that's dominating, but gently, nothing aggressive. Um, you can feel there's something else behind the malt and fruits and uh, lots of things. I know some prefer the 15 to this one, some prefer this one to the other. Uh, okay, on to the taste now. Slanjeva or cheers or kampai or santé, depending on where you are, my friends. Okay. Ooh, getting pepper in the finish. Quite peppery. I was not expecting that. Um, honestly, the first try. It's the smoke over American oak that dominates. I can sense some red fruity thing present in the background but if you haven't told me it was um, port finish or anything else finish we probably not have found out I might have said finally probably might have said we're gonna see when I'm gonna open it port and heavily pitted because it reminds me a lot uh, of the Ben Riach 17. Well, there's more oomph in the Ben Riach 17, more thickness. This is thinner, um, but it's very nice and it's different from my uh, 
previous year Campbelltown Festival, Campbelltown Festival, uh, Glen Scotia bottling, which was a rum cask. Um, finish. Let me have another sip and then I'm gonna open it up. The legs are beautiful, not staying a lot of time. It's strange. Yeah, despite the 52.8, the legs are coming down quickly. I don't know if you see them. Okay, last try before war. Hmm. A bit whiny at the end. Now the Tony Port shows. Still a bit thin. Oh, but it's beautiful. It has some kind of um, serenity in its balance. Um, very delicate. Um, now the second try, the spices are less important. Maybe because I'm used to it. It's a bit more fruit, but it's not a fruit bomb at all. Absolutely not. Um, it's a Glen Scotia diesel funky style, but more civilized in this one than in the 15 rum cask, where its raw side can be shown more. But both are beautiful, and I like this a lot. Hmm, interesting. Uh, this is so subtle. Uh, this uh, I'm not sure hundred percent, but I think it's still available as well as the Glen Moray. That's why I wanted to cover only two whiskies, but two whiskies you're sure to try uh, to find. Uh, I don't have uh, the most recent fender in. That's why I didn't. Uh, cover it but uh, I will come at some point to uh, do a render and run down run down as well okay well water brings more fruit but it's still wrapped under this chimney gently ashy smoky uh, side I like the way how these all these Glen Scotias are different. I have still other samples to assess. Uh, tried only once the 18 and 25 years old. Uh, both delicious. Uh, I have to try them back to do a, a review. I have also other um, samples from uh, to try and a surprise. Uh, yeah, I not, don't want to do too much spoiling about some things, so. Okay, now I think it's ready. So with a few drops of water now. Hmm. There's even more balance. Um. You can feel a bit of port, but it's very subdued. It's still very nice. But something of the ashy smoke is lost. Um, so I might advise you probably to drink this one neat, by preference. But of course, it's your choice. Just please don't ruin it with ice because it's so beautiful like that. Um, yeah, very nice. Thank you so much, Lunara, and once again. Mm. Yeah, very subtle one. I have to dig more into it to uh, before um, doing a review. Thank you very much for watching. I enjoyed a lot, even if it was a bit improvised and not so super professional. Sorry, <laughs> but I enjoyed a lot coming back once again to you and uh, hope uh, 
you will uh, like it please comment tell me if you have tried something that's on the table or advise other port finishes i might not know um, i'm only talking here about the ones i have on the table uh, i tried a lot of others uh, let me know your thoughts about port finishes and uh, see you soon thank you bye bye